So today I'd like to cover the second part of photosynthesis. With photosynthesis, we know it's two separate but connected metabolic pathways. We already covered the light reactions, where the whole point of the light reactions was for sunlight to excite electrons. And using excited electrons, our plant in the chloroplast organelle is able to make ATP and NADPH energy. Uh, those two energy molecules are what are going to be used in our dark reactions or Kelvin cycle. We used to always call the dark reactions a Kelvin cycle. They're named after the researcher who, who figured out that specific sequence of enzymes for, for using ATP and NADPH energy and forcing carbon dioxide to become essentially uh, glucose. Now, I tend to refer to it as the dark reactions because as educators, one of the things we've noticed is that uh, people get Kelvin and Kreb, we'll be covering the Kreb cycle with aerobic cellular respiration, they get Kelvin and Kreb mixed up. So I think what's best is to uh, learn this as the dark reactions of photosynthesis, that second metabolic pathway for taking carbon dioxide and essentially turning it into glucose. Now, in the textbook, it shows us a very complicated or alludes to a complicated metabolic pathway. In the textbook, we've got that great big circle, and our input is carbon dioxide. And essentially what the textbook is trying to show us is that carbon dioxide is going to get grabbed by the Rubisco protein. And then that Rubisco protein is going to use ATP and NADPH energy to make a molecule called G3P that will eventually get used to make uh, glucose. In order to keep this cycle going, we're going to need a little bit more ATP energy in order to remake the Rubisco protein, turning it into its original form so it can grab more carbon dioxide. The three steps for the dark reactions will be fixation. That's when our Rubisco protein grabs a hold of the carbon dioxide molecule. Our next step is reduction. So we have fixation. where Rubisco grabs a hold of carbon dioxide, we have reduction. And this is where Rubisco is going to use the ATP and NADPH energy from the light reactions. And then our third step is regeneration, where we're remaking that Rubisco protein. And this, of course, will take a little bit more ATP energy. So for those of you who love acronyms, the acronym FER, Fixation, Reduction, Regeneration, F-R-R, -R, will hopefully, help, hopefully help you to remember these three main steps of the dark reactions. Now we're not going into a lot of detail. I know that behind this circle there's a lot more detail than just carbon dioxide entering in during fixation, carbon dioxide getting stuffed with hydrogen and electrons during reduction, and our glucose molecule leaving. And then using some ATP energy to remake that Rubisco protein so we can keep this going. I know there's a lot more details. From our point of view, we want to stay at this level because we need to focus on what is connecting our light reactions and our dark re reactions, what is connecting our metabolic pathways. ATP and NADPH energy molecules are what connect the light and the dark reactions. So if we don't have ATP, if we don't have NADPH, none of this can happen. We need sunlight to get those electrons excited. 
to make that ATP and NADPH energy so that our rubisco protein and the stroma of our chloroplasts can grab those carbon dioxide molecules and eventually turn them into glucose. And remember, glucose molecules, glucose is a monosaccharide. When we bond lots of monosaccharides together, we get a polysaccharide. A polysaccharide like starch in potatoes. A polysaccharide like cellulose in a plant cell wall. So when I'm looking at trees, I just become amazed because I know that all of that mass in the tree is essentially glucose molecules bonded together to make cellulose. And that that glucose went through the dark reactions and originally started out as that slippery carbon dioxide gas coming from our atmosphere. And so the mass of that redwood tree, or an oak tree, all of that really dense wood started out as that slippery, invisible gas around us. And that, to me, is the miracle of plants. They can take that gas, they can take that sunlight energy, and they can make all the stuff we love, strawberries and grapes and bananas and cucumbers and eggplants and tomatoes, if you love tomatoes. And if you don't love all of those things, maybe you love the other animals who like to eat it. Cows and pigs and chickens and even our cats and dogs. At one level, we are all deeply connected to photosynthesis and this relationship between the light and the dark reactions. I hope this video helps you to understand the Calvin cycle or dark reactions. If you have any questions, please email me.